I think we began by asking ourselves, the first dialogue we had here, whether one can be liked oneself, and that problem was never touched upon. Then from there we went to the question of relationship. What actually our relationships are with another. And we went into that question rather briefly, and I, from that observation of our relationships, there were, we talked about fear. Fear of losing somebody, not being attached to somebody, and all the misery and confusion and the uh, broken-hearted affairs that come about. I don't know why you call it broken heart, but it's rather silly. And so on. Then we talked about fear. What is the root of fear? And somehow I feel we are not facing the problem, which was, can one observe the fact the happening, the actuality, which is the now, whatever the reactions, the attachments, the fears, can we face them? And I'm afraid we've never gone into that question. We never held on to it, investigated and find out for ourselves if it is possible at all to observe what is actually actually taking place, the happening, whatever that happening is, whether that happening is imaginative, actual reaction, the potentiality of it, or the possibility of it, and so on. We never stayed with that question. So can we go into that this morning? We want to go into that. Shall we please sir, yes. it's all up to you? Can we face, for example, we leave fear, we'll come back to it later, face the problem that we are attached to somebody. attached, cling to, look to, hold on to some belief, to some dogma, to some ritual, some belief, some experience, or some person. Can we observe or the actual implication, the actuality of attachment. I don't know, please, sir. One is attached to, we'll go through the whole business of it, one is attached to one's experience. from which there are certain remembrances, knowledge, and holding on to the knowledge, ex- uh, experience, and the memory of it, holding on, never letting go. Or some idea, cling to those ideals. All the politicians, all the priests, all the bishops, and all the rest of the whole business, they all have ideals. And we also, some of us have ideals too, 
and we hold on to them, which is a form of attachment. Form, other forms of belief, certain routine, and so on, so on, so on. And principally in our relationships, we are attached to a person. Can we watch, stay with that fact that we are attached and watch it, and let the attachment, the whole nature of attachment, reveal itself instead of you telling that it, one must be attached, one must not be attached, and so on. Can the The story of attachment can it be revealed by observing it. I don't know how to put it. From which arises fear. I might lose. I'm, and from that loss I feel hurt, broken hearted, or wounded. Jealous and anxiety, the whole nature of attachment. Can you remain, watch that, and let the story involved in that reveal itself? Perhaps that may be very complex and rather difficult. Can you watch, observe, and remain with what is going on, what is happening, such as fear? And why is it we find it so difficult to remain with a fact? Mr. G, I think um, one of the difficulties with watching an attachment in relationship is something you brought up on the first day, I think, and that is that the very participation in the relationship obscures the fear. It's all, it's somehow or other, as long as the relationship is there, the real facets of somehow or other are covered over. It's like, uh, let's look at it very practically. You go into the day and you experience things in a strange way. And then the relationship is there to run back to. You yes. can always hide in the relationship. Yes. So what are you trying to say, sir? I don't quite follow. Well, I'm trying to say that relationship acts like an umbrella under which all experience occurs. In that under that umbrella of relationship. Isn't that attachment? Yes. Now, can, we, can one stay with that, watch it without any deviation, and let the thing that you are watching tell its story, rather than you tell what it should be? You follow what I mean? Can you do that? Can one do that? So that it reveals everything. Like a flower, when you watch it very, very closely, it, there it is, you see everything in its detail. The delicacy of the vein and, you know, the beauty of the whole thing. In the same way, perhaps, if you could watch this burden of attachment, I won't even call it a burden, attachment, it may contain an extraordinary beauty in it and go from that move, but apparently we can't do it. Why not? Uh, 
Sloan, Sloan, would you kindly tell me? Maria, I'm talking of something else. But Just a minute. You see, what do you mean by us? I want to go into it. May we go into all this or is not? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Don't you watch a flower in the bud, then as it blossoms fully, and then a few days later it dies, collapses, vanishes. In the same way, perhaps, if we could watch this sense of attachment, let it flower, without you telling it what it thought, telling it what it should do. Then, if I, do I understand you correctly that where the word thought that you're using in this sense is a sort of sensor coming in? Yes, the sensor coming in. Put it that way. There is something else which, for want of a better word, I'm calling thought, which is that that seeing, that seeing the I don't I have no feeling, I have no thought, I'm just observing. But what are you observing something that isn't a, an outside thing like a flower? You look at it and it's there. You're looking at something within yourself. Therefore, there is a movement of that attachment or whatever it is going on in the mind in order for you to look at it. Now is that thought or not? No. Yes, but you see that the Christian chief that I think Gary is uh, raising an important point. If you're actively involved in attachment, who's going to do the watching? I'm attached. I'm quite clearly attached. Every part of my life is is organized by the attachment. Now, how am I going to watch that? I can watch the attachment, but there's always going to be a piece that's going to get away as long as I am in that situation of attachment. All right, sir. Let's go into it slowly. <laughs> You answer, please. Well, let me ask, uh, Dr. Schenker, uh, can you see that very thing happen? Can you see that involvement as part of the, the whole thing you're looking at? No, I, that's what I'm saying. I don't think you can. As long there is always an ingredient. In other words, in many observations, it's almost as if the urgency of life is absorbed by that attachment. And it's only if you stop the attachment, that's a different thing, then, then that's removed. But as long as the attachment is there, I don't think you ever see it, because you're attached. How are you saying, sir? The very attachment prevents you from observing. Right. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Right, that's it in simple terms. Is that so? I just see the problem being that the past immediately rushes in, seems to automatically, habitually rush, rush yes. in and say yes, what I, should be. I understand. But Dr. Schenberg is asking a question, which is, when one is attached to somebody, when I'm attached to you, or to somebody, can I be aware of that attachment? You follow me? Mm -hmm. Or go on, so you answer me, please. I want to. I'm attached, one is attached to somebody. Do I know I'm attached? <coughs> or I discover I'm attached through pain. Let's go slowly through pain, through jealousy, through anxiety. Then I realize I'm attached. Right, sir? I've realized that I'm attached, which means I know 
I'm attached. No? No, I think that your experience of pain, jealousy, and anger is a reaction. It's not a real awareness. You're reacting to the loss, the momentary loss of attachment. No, it's not. How do I know I'm attached, sir? Let's begin with that. How do I know I'm attached? I'm very friendly, I etc., etc., and I live like that. And how do I know, how does one know that one is holding on, having put a hook in somebody, holding on to that? How does one know it? You tell me, as a friend, say, look, you are going, be careful, when you get involved with a tremendous attachment, you are going to pay for it, right? I don't pay much attention to you, because I like this attachment. I like this feeling that I'm, somebody owns me, I own somebody. You know, possessed and be possessed. And there is a sense of gratification in that. How do I know that it is attachment? The actual fact, not the word. How do I know? I don't know. Till something happens in that relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Krishnaji, don't I know because my attention is <coughs> drawn in one direction? It's not no, open. no, I'm not interested. Even though I'm in one direction or other, but let's stick to one thing, sir. That is, I only know when there is some kind of discomfort, <coughs> some kind of pain, some kind of, you know, Insecurity. quiver. Mm -hmm. huh? Insecurity? Insecurity. Call it what you like. Now, it's only then I say, I am attached, this is coming from that. But, Is not the attachment, you're seeing how you're reacting to So, wait, I'm, the, the, I'm saying that, which is, I'm we are explaining to each other. That is, the reaction I have as pain in attachment. So, can, this whole process can I observe. Is there an observation of this whole thing? This happening, I, whatever word you like to use, the actual state and the nature of it instantly. You follow, sir? Or must I go through years and years of pain and at last give it up? Oh, goodness sake, break it. You follow, sir? Now, I am asking, that is a fact. I'm a, there is pain, there is the real, which is the reaction to attachment, right? Do I realize all the implication? Does one realize all the implication of attachment by by observing it, not letting thought wipe it away or distort it? Just watch it. <coughs> Can't you? Isn't that not? Is that not possible? Immediately there, if you examine attachment. If you look at attachment, you immediately perceive a possibility of pain in it. So, I, no. that's what I'm asking. Why is it that we can't see the whole implication of attachment instantly and finish? What is the dif Where is the difficulty in this? Saying uh, that attachment we see from its consequences, uh, uh, and therefore we infer the attachment. But uh, you are asking that we might see the attachment unfold from the bottom. I don't quite follow you. So, are you? See, you said that we uh, see attachment through its consequences, right? Not directly. Yes, and we infer the attachment. So, so. Through consequences we realize we attachment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, is there the origin of attachment, the bud from which it unfolds? 
Are you suggesting that we see it from the inception? Yes, yes. Directly. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. Why can't we see it, the whole nature of it, instantly? From its inception. Huh? From the point of its inception. Yeah, from the, the point through. of inception. The, the whole story of it. Yeah. In point of fact, though, because we see it from consequences, we don't go to the to the direct play, we go toward the solution. Yes, sir, I know that's what I... Yeah. Either through consequences we realize we're attached, or we have instant realization of what attachment implies, and, and finished. Which is it we do? I wish we would stick to this. Do we really want to end the attachment? Because surely we became attached. I, sir, but I, I'm not asking whether we end it. Why don't we see the nature and the structure of attachment instantly, all its implications? Apparently, that's a pair, we can't do it. But we generally do, what we generally do is consequences. And then realize why I'm attached and therefore pay. And then fix it up. Oh? Fix it. Fix it. Fix it up. In other yeah. words, yes, <laughs> yes. I think pain is the obstacle in, in every direction because surely we became attached in the first instance because we felt here's one person who's not going to hurt me. And then if we feel we've lost that, then we're going to be exposed to other hurts. We've got no refuge. Yes, sir, but can you watch your attachment, sir? You or anybody, any of us. Can we watch our attachment? Do it now, sir, not learn, and then... See, <laughs> learning implies, doesn't it, that you have accumulated knowledge and then watch with that knowledge. Haven't you suggested another kind of learning where you listen and observe and learn? Yes. Right. Yes. You're, you're not, you see, sir, what is happening now? We are dissipating by talk, by words by explanation. So we are not actually saying, yes, I, have, I am attached. Let me look. Huh? Shadi, when, when I try to do that, my mind immediately makes an abstraction of what attachment is. And then I find myself looking at that and not looking at the so, thing. Which is that you are making an idea of attachment and not the actual fact. Huh? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're doing, Shankar? Or you're, that's a, just an idea for you? Is that what you're actually doing and not looking at attachment? That's what's happening, sir, and uh, perhaps we could go into how that happens, you know, how one can step out of that. I don't know. Let's first watch it and then see what happens, whether it continues or whether it stops. Let's first rem remain with that fact and let the fact tell its whole story. Gosh, how difficult this is. I am attached to my wound psychological wound, suppose. I like that wound. I hold on to it. It gives me some anchor around which I can worry and I can fuss around and, you know, carry on the game. Can I watch that wound which I have received from childhood and let the whole thing flower? And it Huh? Without you making it flower or denying it, controlling it, loving it, the holding on to it, let that thing flower and see what happens. Thank you. 
painful thing to do. He said, ah, ah, you see what you have done? You have told it. You have told that's painful. It may not be. I said, let, let it tell you the story, not you say it is painful. Pain is surely a completely subjective thing. I, I, I just feel pain, full stop. What? Pain is such a subjective thing, uh, psychologically, that I just feel pain. Pain is the, <coughs> pain is the, re, if the consequence or the effect of attachment. So when you say it's painful, hmm, are you watching the thing? Or you have said, it will be painful. Isn't there a chain in all this? The attachment is arrived at as a descent against another thing, the pain of helplessness or dependence or whatever it is. So there's, there's a series of uh, yes, defensive... Yes, ma'am, but I'm pleased. Can you remain with the fact? We're attached to so many things. No, please. I'm. You see, you are now expanding. I only. I'm trying to ask, if I may, etc., etc. Ask whether you whether the mind can remain quietly observing the fact. Observing what what is. Then my curiosity must be greater than my defensiveness. What's up? Then my curiosity must be greater than my usual defensiveness. But uh, you see, you are telling. You are again talking what you might. Your curiosity, your effort. You are not observing it. That's what I meant by by being curious to to, to see to look. Rather than the automatic. That's it, that's response. look, look. But the looking comes out of curiosity to, to see. No, no, there's no curiosity, sir. <coughs> Can, what is the difficulty in this? I'm at a loss. It's our, it, was our, <clears throat> it was our first question, Krishnaji. We said, why can't we or why don't we? Look at a fact. Yeah, that's all I'm saying. <clears throat> and we're not any closer, or I'm not any closer to seeing why. I think so. We are using, we are trying to avoid the issue. Yes. Huh? Yes. I think we are trying to, because we are, there is a sense of apprehension about it. What might happen? Which again you follow, which prevents you from looking at the fact. Are we saying that fear prevents us from looking at facts then? I don't, maybe fear, maybe that you're not really concerned about watching, or you like the state in which you are. Huh? You follow? Don't disturb me, for God's sake. I am attached. I am. I am wounded. I am this and that. Don't disturb that because I am used to it, mm -hmm. and I like the I. I like that. I am wounded or attacked. That gives me a certain sense of security. You follow? Don't disturb that security. Is that what is happening? No. Then what is happening? Why can't we look? Because all this verbiage. One problem is that it, 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 it's very difficult to see the, the, the attachment here in this room. In this room, the attachment is, is sleeping. Is drawn. Throughout attachment, sir, okay. uh, you have uh, something or other. Why can't your own? feeling of anger, jealousy, whatever it is, can't just watch it. But it's the same problem. What, 
whether you, whether you're jealousy or attachment or whatever. You come, you're, you're in the room and you're in a certain state of attention, and the the, the, the attachments are outside you, when you go out. You see, you're not watching. <laughs> I agree. But. I think one of the problems, Christians, is I don't think we can get at it by uh, going from consequences. It seems that there has to be another kind of uh, watching. I there is, but you're not willing to. I think the consequence, the watching through consequences, is absurd. You know what I mean? That is a deviation itself. Yes. Isn't it? Well, I, I've said all this, sir. Now, please watch. Can you watch the fact? Because I think this is very important. If you can understand this very seriously and integrally, the thing that we are called fear may disintegrate through its own flowering. You follow? Look, I'm at when he's angry. And when we are angry, at this second of anger, there is no identification with it at all. A few seconds later, the whole business of identification, I should, should not control, and all that arises. But in watching, without any movement, of thought, actually, watching, then in that watching, let anger, uh, anger flowers, blooms, expands and withers away. You, that is what I want to get at. So that instead of suppressing it, would makes it more stronger, by watching it, it expands, the chapter comes to an end, the book comes to an end. But as, Sh as Shankar said, that we can see that as an abstraction quite easily. What? As Shankar said, we can see that as an abstraction. What? The, 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 the problem, the anger, okay, here, now, we can see anger as an abstraction, but we are not angry. Okay, I'm not no, angry. No, I took that as an example. Yeah, but it's the, it's the same for whichever example you take. Right? Huh? It's the same for whichever example you yes, take. Yes, yes. What well, are you trying if, to if, say? If, 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 you, if, if we are angry, right, the, the problem is you are caught in the anger and the reactions of the anger and so on and so on. Okay? Here we are not angry. Here we are uh, not attached. What are you doing here? All right. What are you doing here? Would you kindly tell me what you're all doing here? Maybe we could look at the fact that we're not quite meeting. Huh? Uh, maybe we could look at the fact that we're not quite meeting, understanding. No, sure I'm asking, why are you here? Absolute silence. To understand oneself. Come on. To so understand oneself. To understand oneself. To know oneself. Is that why you are here? To learn. Come on. To learn. To learn. But you're not learning. You repeat. Learning implies that you listen. Mm -hmm. Right? Learning implies that you are sufficiently 
curious, sufficiently intent, sufficiently eager to find out, learn. But apparently you are not, because you have been telling me what the flower is. Right? We are not learning at all. We are not learning from each other. We are telling each other what we each one of us think. So we are attached to what we think. That's all. And what you think? What I think. I think we are attached uh-huh. to what you I think. Haven't, I haven't told you what I think. Oh, yes. No. Uh-uh. <laughs> I have not told you what I think. Oh, yes. You <laughs> All right, sir. Since you know it, would you kindly tell me what I think? I know that case. That's a very good question. Please think it out. Why are you here? You are free. Hmm? You came here. Why? As Ms. Mahogri said, to learn about oneself. Have you learnt anything about yourself? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Learnt what? At a superficial level? The top layer? You don't have to come here to learn the top layer. <laughs> you follow? So, have you learnt about yourself? Learnt all about yourself, not just one layer of yourself, the whole content of yourself. Now, the whole, can you watch? I'm coming back to the same thing. Can you watch the whole content of yourself? Don't, don't throw it away with a lot of words. Can I know myself totally? All my anxieties, fears, sorrows, pain, my psychological wounds, my attachments, my hopes, my fears, my longings, my loneliness, my... You follow? The whole of it. Can you? Huh? Can you for yourself? Do you want to learn about it? No, no, if you can, if you, if you did, it seems so difficult. Now, to... my question, sir, you said you came here to learn about yourself. I said, have you learned anything? Or have you just scraped the surface hmm? and say, yes, I've learned a little bit? That's not, that's not good enough. So I'm asking in return, can you learn all about yourself? Not over the years, over the months and days and till you die. Can you learn about yourself completely now, as you're sitting here? That means we would have to see the root of ourselves. No, no, no. You see, you're going off to something else. Sir, perhaps we could go into what happens when you ask that question. Yes, sir, ask yourself. I'm asking you again. Can you learn about yourself, which is a which is a very complex, intricate, subtle thing, completely? You, you can't say you, I, I can't answer yes or no. Right? I, I can't. I have no, no means to proceed from that no, question. No, no. I've asked a question, sir. Do you want to learn about yourself completely? If you say, do you want to learn, of course. Oh, yes. Wait, wait. What is your reaction to that question? Can you say, of course? Is it possible? Huh? One asks, is it possible? You've made a 
ask a question. Yes, I've asked a question. Do we want to learn about ourselves? My response to that is, now, is this possible? If I say yes, what will you do? I still don't know. So you want to learn about you. Learn, no, learn whether you can have an insight into the whole nature of it. Right? Yes. Whether you can learn. Yes. Right? Is that what you're... Huh? That's what I'm for. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm asking generally. Is that what you want to do? Learn. Please listen carefully, because I'm... Learn the whole nature and the structure which is a movement of yourself. That's why we have come together. Is that it? Right? Yes. Right, sir? Right. Now, who is going to teach you? Please listen carefully. Who is going to teach you? Here, the man sitting here. Huh? Huh? Why do you say no? Because I have to look at myself. What do you mean that, by that? You see, you're not, you're not carefully watching what you're saying. It's extraordinary. You see, you have said, no, I, you can't, I, you can't learn the entirety of yourself from me, from the speaker. One has to learn from oneself. Is that so? Remain with the questions for two seconds. Is that so? I think the trouble is we are relying on somebody else to do the work for us. Hey, I think we say we want to learn about ourselves and understand ourselves, but actually we want somebody else to do the work for us. Yes. Oh, you are saying, really, I can't do it by myself. You yeah. tell me all about it. I, huh? I, think, I think that's what Yeah, that's it. Yeah. You want me to do all the work, and then you listen to it, mm. and then take it home with you, or not. And in that way, we make it into an idea. Yes. So, are you depending on me? Yes, I don't know. Why? Because we feel we can't do it No, 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 but be, uh, why? Why are you depending on me to tell you how to... to uh, to teach you how to observe the totality of yourself. Is it a habit, depending on another? Is it traditional? Is it what you have been educated into? To accept another, to help you to understand the totality of yourself. Huh? It's a state of being immature. Immature? Yes, if you like to put it that way. But, sir, I am getting... Look, it's very interesting, this, if you go into yourself. Who will teach you? All... The whole question is wrong. There's no who. What? How can there be a who will teach me when... How can there be a who that will teach me when I want to learn not from information but from the inside? Yeah. I'm learning about this person. Mm -hmm. Christian G, I think that there's another piece here that you've added. I don't think you're being radical enough about what? it. What? What's up? I say I don't think you're being radical enough about it because what you're really saying is that no one really wants to learn. That's all. But that's quite a radical statement. Yeah. Nobody wants to. I didn't. I was being too polite. To say. I know. <laughs> Christian G, I'd like to ask something. Please don't jump on me because I'm. I won't jump on you, Shankar. Oh boy, I won't jump on you. I've often heard you say 
this about understanding all about myself and instantly. Now, I find with myself that whenever I'm approaching anything, I'm approaching it in a very separated way. Like I talk, I try to find out about relationship, and then I try to find out about attachment or fear. And I would like to ask whether this whole approach is wrong. Hmm? This whole approach is self-defeating, approaching things one by one, because there's so many things that you know one can go on and on this way. Or whether there is a stage where one prepares oneself to learn how to question, <coughs> to learn, you use the word, the art of questioning, to learn how to approach things, to learn how to see. Or What are you trying to say? Sir? I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to ask is whether before one can see, <coughs> come to this point where one is looking at everything together. Yes, l looking at something whole, <coughs> holistically, as a whole. Is that what you're trying to say? I'm asking whether there is this something that happens before that, one prepares oneself for that or something. Ah, no, there is no preparation. You see, you are going off to something. Shankar, I am not jumping on you. Forgive me. If, if anybody thinks I jump on anybody, if I do, please forgive me. Do I want to learn about myself? Do I want to know, actually, not theoretically, do, is it my deep, committed, irrevocable interest to know myself? Is that it? Is that what you have? Irrevocable! <laughs> that you are so completely committed. Just a minute, sir. What is there to learn about myself? Nothing. Right? There's absolutely nothing I have to learn about myself. Because myself is nothing. I've put lots of things on it. On this nothing, I have education, science, philosophy. All the things you follow, pile it on. All the things religions have said, which are the most destructive things that what religions have done, they have put all this on me, on this essentially nothing. And we are battling, struggling on these things. You follow? About these things, changing from one thing to another. What have I to learn about myself? That I'm crooked? That I don't think straight? That I'm vain? That I'm arrogant? I'm proud? I'm this? What does it all mean? Words, don't they? Memories, ideas. Have ideas any content? Except that what thought gives to that idea. I wonder if you get to all this. No, this is too radical, as. <laughs> sir, when you say nothing, I have the feeling of an empty room. Ah, oh, sir, you follow? Do you know the word, meaning of the word nothing? Not a thing. A thing. So why it's so difficult? Because we are still attached to all these things. What, sir? If we weren't attached to all these things, there would be no problem. But being attached to all these things, we, That's can, right, sir. we don't know it. If you understand, sir, all my, the whole of my existence, the whole content of me, is put together by thought. Huh? Right? Right, sir? And thought is memory. Right? Right? So, 
I am living, I am a whole a structure made by memory. Huh? And it's not, I can't touch it. I can't, there's nothing to say. You, it is totally unreal living on memory. This is too radical, so I won't go into it. Perhaps it seems to me that I can say I am nothing, but the interesting question is how I create the illusion that I am something. You see, the, see it appears in ordinary life that to each person that he is really something. Yes. And he creates somehow that illusion. Yes, the illusion created by thought. Yes. And which, which is, I am something. Yes. Important. And yes, I am something. When that thing, when that thing is not, I am nothing. And therefore, it is still so. When I say I am nothing, it is still thought. It is not an actuality. Because there is that illusion that. Of course. God is always created. So, how do, how do we accept this illusion? Why do we accept this illusion? About which we must learn. You follow? <laughs> spend years, spend all money, books. Oh. No, this is too radical. So I won't go into this much too. Not too radical. <laughs> Let's go into no, it. <laughs> I said, it's not too radical. We want to go into it. Ah, ah, ah. You don't understand it, then. You understand that it means one has to reject psychologically everything that thought has put together. That's right. And that's why it's too radical. You won't. I mean, it does. It sounds nice. It looks. <coughs> it feels. I know there's something in it, but it's. One has to go into it very, very deeply. You can't just say, "Well, go into it." So, here we are. We all say, well, "I'm interested." Why? I ask. We ask the question. Why are we all here? To learn about oneself. And you say, Have you learned anything about yourself while you are here? That you are jealous, anxious, fearful, have a position which you must maintain, you have got a, you have been wounded and cling to that wound, and so kind of, you know, live in that. Which becomes totally neurotic and all the rest. Have you learnt anything? Or are we all playing tricks with each other? So when we say we come to learn about the nature of the soul. We're really learning, if any, learning takes place on that score. It is learning about the nature of illusion. Sir, I'm asking a question, sir. Why are you here? I know why I'm here. I'm very clear. <coughs> can you be? Can you be? Just a minute. Let me finish. Just a minute. Can you be as clear as that? I'll tell you why I'm here. I want to tell you a story. <laughs> I want to tell you something that is tremendously important. All the rest of it. I know, uh, uh, sitting, K knows exactly what you, what what he wants to do. Are you clear? Or you've got innumerable motives? Innumerable 
contradictory motives. Yes. Huh? Innumerable contradictory <coughs> motives. Yes, that's innumerable contradictory <laughs> Anyhow, have you? So how can we communicate with each other? You follow, sir? Krishnaji, I feel that the basic difficulty is that to learn, the learning process is twisted. So if we continue in this twisted process, we won't, I mean, All right. we won't be able to learn. No, wait a minute. Can we take up learning? Go into it completely, huh? What is implied, and actually find out what it means to learn. Because I think implied <laughs> in the learning process we carry out day to day is the, are the tricks we play with, with ourselves. Yes, sir. So we'll be playing tricks all the time. No, wait. That's why I'm asking. Do you want to learn? I would say to learn about the process. No, to le no. What does it mean, the act of learning? How can you learn if you're attached? What? Can you learn if you're attached? I can't hear. Can you learn if you're attached? Oh, yeah. No, sir. No. Forget attachment for the moment. Don't bring that in. Do you want to, do you want to find out, sir, the art of learning? The art. What is here for the whole business? Do you want to learn? What am I to say? If you want to learn, if you want to learn the art of learning, right? What price do you pay for it? Seven pounds a day? Our reservations. <laughs> what, sir? Look, sir. You go to a cinema, pay ten pounds, five pounds, three pounds, and to be entertained for an hour, two hours. And here you come here, and you pay something for logic. I'm not talking of that kind of pain. What are you willing to pay? Not in coin, not in paper. Actually, what you say, look, I'll give everything to find out. Or he says, sorry, I can't give everything, but I'll give you fifty percent of it. Or twenty-five percent. Don't ask me a hundred percent, but I'll give you ten percent. Is that what we're doing? Well, I don't know until I come up against a reservation. I don't know. I'm asking, sir. Don't tell me. I'm asking. There's someone who says to me, I'll give everything I have to learn to find out. Hmm? Nobody has said that to me, here or in India or anywhere else. Perhaps one or two have. But I'm asking you, out of politeness, kindness, etc., respect, what? What do you pay for something which is unpayable? <laughs> right. So, sir, I must we'll come back. How much pay you are giving? You, how much are you giving to? Find out for yourself to stay with the fact. I'm take, going back to that. One thing, because it's very important. Mm. 
to stay with falsehood. You follow, sir? With an illusion. And don't call it an illusion, but to stay with the fact that one is caught in some idea and live in that idea, work for that idea, um, uh, sacrifice everything you have for that idea. Can you? Um, what, what amount of energy, which is the pain, are you giving to it, to stay with one fact? So you see, if you want to go into the question very deeply, and it's ne necessary to go into this very deeply, then meditation is to remain so completely with the fact, with what is happening, it is totally dissolved. Every reaction allowed to flower, wither away, so that there is no psychological inward reaction to any challenge. I wonder if I'm talking. Huh? It's become, sorry, it's becoming totally aware of one's quality, one's the condition of one's. Um, Yes, sir. Can, can you, can I or you be aware totally of, of our condition? Not bit by bit, bit by bit, but the nationality, the superstition, the, the beliefs, the educated, sophisticated self, you know, the whole thing. It's so much to, to but, sir, go in. Huh? Implied, implied in staying with the fact is the disillusion, dissolution of the illusion, but the illusion itself is trying to survive. No, it won't. It, it, illusion only tries. Illusion survives because you are strengthening it by fighting it, by saying, I must be free of it. But if you say yes, what is an illusion? What do you call an illusion? <coughs> What's the me the word? What does it mean, sir? The root of the word is to uh, uh, to play, to act. You know. Huh? It's to act falsely, to have a false play. Really. Yes, yeah, that's what. Like an interlude. Yeah, that's what. Right? Right. Now, I'm asking, what do you call illusion? A nothingness. Huh? A nothingness. Oh, no, that is illusion. Mm. <laughs> For you, it is an illusion. Do you know if you go to church, if you're all Catholic, all, all Christians here, except you? Do you know the whole of that is vast illusion? <coughs> what? Are we here in church? What? Are we in church now? What? Are we in church now? No, <laughs> no sir. We are saying those of us who go to church or being brought up in this religion, Christian religion, with their symbols, with their saviors, with their Virgin Marys, with their rituals, with their etc., etc., etc. Is that not an illusion? I'm asking you, I don't. Huh? Would you say anything thought has created psychologically is illusion? 
А вы сейчас? А? А вы living in that illusion? А? Now, can you remain with that illusion? Let it flower. Don't say, I, what is an illusion, what is not an illusion, how can I get rid of it? Isn't it good to have a little bit of illusion? And <laughs> you follow me. But just to say, yes, I see I am an illusion, which is psychologically, thought has created something which are, uh, instead of all that, is totally unreal. Reality being that which is touchable, you understand? Taste and so on. So anything thought has created psychologically is illusion. Can you, can one remain with that fact? And not say and not let thought move away from that. Of course, if you told that to the Archbishop or the Pope, he said, well, he said, don't be sick. I lose my job. However, it seems that perhaps at first sight that the self is touchable, or it has a sense. What's up? It may, there seems to be an illusion that the self is touchable. Yes, I know you said that what is real is touchable, but I think one feels that the self is also that's right. <laughs> see, what I'm... What? You see, if there is only a, the observation of the fact, of the happening, don't you remove all conflict? Look, I'm attached. I've seen the, how, I, how attached one to rose, all that business. Now I'm just watching attached, being attached to that person. I've seen the whole consequences of attachment, the pain, the jealousy, the suffering, the so-called absurd, broken heart and all that business. I just, now I'm just watching. And in watching, won't it expand? Huh? And therefore, totally wither away? So there is no conflict. You follow, sir? Because when we are attached, we say we must be detached, and we struggle to be detached. So I've learned something or that. Attachment and detachment are similar. Huh? I wonder if you... So, if I remain with that fact of attachment, see how quickly it withers up? Huh? I wonder if you see this. If you do it, you actually do it. I wonder if there's a problem that, see, it's clear what you mean by watching something outside with the senses out. It's not so clear what you mean by watching something inside. You understand? Dr. Bomi is asking the two different kinds of watching. Watching something outside of you and watching inside of you. Uh, watching something inside of you. Isn't that a difference? Yeah. Huh? Now, how do you watch? Please te- discuss, how do you watch something inside yourself, inside of yourself? You remain with it. No, 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 you haven't. I'm asking you, how do you watch it, look at it, observe it, hear the noise of it, the music of it, the, the story of it?
You, you understand? Uh, you understand the question, sir? Please understand the question first. It's easy to watch outside, right? Something outside, like the moon, the trees, the birds, the water, hmm? the stray dog or your pet dog, and so on, or your wife or your husband. It's easy to watch, but is it as easy as that to watch what is happening inside? That's a question, you understand, sir? Answer it, find out. It's not done with the senses, then. What? It's not done with the senses, like we watch something outside. Why do you discard the senses? So I pose, I pose a thought, and then I feel some reaction. This is the only way I can watch. I can't watch. I don't watch a whole movement. Look, sir. You've been wounded, haven't you, in church psychologically? Don't you? <laughs> you have, haven't you? Can you watch that wound? At that time or now? No, now, now. Don't. <laughs> So I must recreate the wound. No, it's there. I don't see it. Oh, but it's there. <laughs> that you stood. Inside of you. No, have to it listen to the very interesting thing that he said. He said, I don't see it. Which means what? It's there, but he doesn't see it. Why? I have a wound. Psychologically I have been hurt, suppose, and that wound is there. I may forget it, I may not think about it, I may, be, I may have thought of it and doesn't know, don't know what to do with it. So I say, let's keep quiet, old, old wound, I can't do anything. So, but it's there. So he says, I can't see it. Hmm? Why? Is the wound is psychological inside. Hmm? Why? You, you're not. You're not <laughs> you, you only know that you have the wound if, if you think about it or if something prompts you to think so, about it. So only when you think about it, you know that you have a wound. Is that it? <laughs> huh? Yes. So when you don't think about it, it's not there. No. Huh? No. Oh, no, do, do. <laughs> no, it's still there, even though you haven't thought about it. It's still there. You're still still there, even sad. though you haven't thought about it. Pardon? It's still there, even though you haven't thought about it. Even though it's, it hasn't come awake. Put yeah, out. that's right. The moment you think about it, it becomes a lie. If you don't think about it, it's dawn. Dawn. So it's there. Still there. Now, can you see that wound, psychological wound, not physical wound or physical disability? Can you can you watch that wound as it is now? This is a common factor, isn't it, sir? Oh, everybody in the world is wounded. Some cling to it and worship it and adore it and say, it's so how lovely it is. Others say, are dormant, or the thing is dormant, only occasionally it wakes up. All the rest of it. As it's a common problem, can, can we all, can each one of us observe that which is common in each one of us? Watch it. I've been you've been wounded. <coughs> Is that wound a reality? Reality, let's begin clear. Reality in the sense anything that thought has put together is reality. But is that reality be an illusion, the wound, the uh, Architecture, you know, 
anything that thought has put together is reality. Yes, it's real. Huh? It's real. Reality, real. This yes, it is real. Is. It is. Yeah. So, this wound is a reality. Right? Yes. Can, I, can the mind watch this reality? And let that wound flower, not control it, separate it, run away from it, just watching it. I see you can't do it. Well, I ha- I don't think I haven't understood. If, if we can only, if we're only of the, aware of the wound when we think about it, are you saying it's possible to be aware of it without so thinking about it? Think about it. Think about it, and it's there, then, right? Now, can you watch that thing and let it let it come out? You follow? Let let the wound tell you all its story from the first word to the last chapter. Do we watch that also with the senses? What? Uh, can we watch that also with the senses? And you said before the senses may take a part. Of course. Or could you explain that? Oh. <laughs> you explain it. <Right. laughs> I mean, do you, you feel the sense of the wound when you, con- when you recall it? You mean the physical sense? Yes. So that brings up a very interesting question. I don't know if this may not be the right occasion. In the psychological state, is it the result of senses at all? What do you mean? That's not clear. You understand my question, sir? <coughs> that is, have the senses put the thing there? Hmm? <coughs> or it lives apart from the senses. Well, perhaps it lives in memory. <laughs> I just, I don't want to go into for the moment to. Is it apart from the senses? Huh? Yes. I mean, the psychological state would live apart from the senses. I mean, the senses would. would, would <laughs> I'm sorry. Don't forget what I said. <laughs> Let's come back to me. I'm just so I want to find out how to look at my wound. Not the physical wound, that's fairly I can observe it. It pains, it hurts, it can do something about it. But the psychological wound, the more I do something about it, the more I try to avoid it, the wound survives. Blo- uh, begins. Hmm? Now, can I watch that wound, which is not an illusion, because thought has created that wound, so therefore it's a reality, a reality as real as, real as the things that exist in a church. Right, sir? Both are real. So can I watch the reality of the wound? Sir, I could bring that feeling up inside of me. I could have done that. I've remembered a specific occasion. I brought it up in me, the, the feeling how I felt. But you talk about going a stage further where you read it from the beginning. Watch it, plan. watch it! Take time. You follow, sir? You're wounded, aren't you? From, like all of us, like all children, from the t- small, from childhood, as you grow, you get wounded. Uh, this human relationship, the world, and everything is, be- is intent on this wounding each other, or praising each other. You follow the same thing. Can you watch that? If you watch it, doesn't it fl- grow, flower? 
Doesn't it tell you all its how it came into being? How it hmm? It doesn't have the same power. I'm not hurt so much from it just by being oh. with it. Who is very badly hurt here? <laughs> all right, I'll take it. I'm very badly hurt. I'm not, but I'll take it. I'm very badly hurt psychologically. I have done all kinds of things to avoid it, suppress it, control it, resist other people hurting me more, built a wall around myself, isolated myself, and hoping thereby nobody will hurt me. But there, in that isolation there's always fear, right? This is all the flowering because I'm watching it. I want to you follow. It's all the story which is being told by watching the womb, how it arose. It arose because I had a good picture of myself. And that picture has been hurt. The image, the idea of myself has been hurt. And the hurt is you told me that I was naughty, that I was ugly, that you must be better than your brother, that you must be a saint, you must be a So you follow? By watching the wound, the wound is telling me the whole thing. Right? Is it with you? And so, as I am giving it freedom to open itself up. You follow, sir? Because of that freedom, it opens and withers away. So there is no room. But the wound is there because one inhibited the flowering. What? The wound is still there because one has inhibited the natural flowering of that. The wound is there, but you have, but you have never looked at it. That's right. That's been hit. That's what I'm saying. You've never looked at it, and said, "Look, old boy, I'm hurt. Let me look at this hurt." I think you underestimate the fact that approaching the wound hurts itself. Of course, so there's tremendous pain on approaching the wound. I, that's why I talked previously. I said, how do you approach a problem? In what? How do you come to it freely, or with a prejudice, with etc., etc., with a conclusion? This must be. This must not be. I must control. Or do you come to it? You follow? Freely. Then the problem. It's like a wave that breaks down with us away. Yes, but Krishna, see, the fact is, and I don't feel that you want to stay with the fact, the fact is that when you approach it, there's tremendous pain. Is it? Yes. I question it. You know, sir, so discuss I think it's more than pain. Wait, wait, he's also, uh, it's more than pain, I agree. He's also questioned, which is, he said, the very approach awakens fear. That's what Dr. Schoenberg says. I say, is that so? Or I have an idea that might cause pain and therefore I'm afraid. You follow, sir? Therefore I'm not approaching it at all. But isn't that what pain is about, the idea about I will have pain. Yes, that's we an idea. All, all pain. Therefore, I'm not approaching it. So, look, I want to know, or anybody, any religious man wants to know, if there's God, right? Right? In India, that's the eternal song, and also in this country, when if you're a religious Christian or the business. Don't you want to find out there's God? Or do you say, yes, I believe in God? I mean, that means nothing. To find out 
You must come to the problem freely, without any conclusion of your belief, your prejudice, your conditioning. Right, sir? Huh? So your conditioning is the God. <laughs> you follow? Mm -hmm. no, you don't get it. But you, but you move away again. I, I think you move away. Let's stay with this issue of the fear on approaching the womb. Yes, sir. Let's stay away from God. I, well, I, I brought him for God because that is fairly demonstrable. Mm -hmm. All right. I am psychologically wounded, if I am. And what is my approach to that wound? What's your approach to the wound that you have? If you have any. Come on, sir, tell me what's your... There, there is no approach. That, that's just it. We, no. we just run away from it. No, I'm asking. Running away is your approach. It's not an approach. I mean, it's not an approach. I agree. But the fact is you run away from it. Yes. So I'm asking, what is your approach? Your approach is that you're running away from it. Well, the fact is that I'm running away. Right, that's all. Uh, somebody, what, 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 how, is, how is your approach? Would somebody... We think about it. What, sir? We think about it. You think about it. That's your approach. How do you think about it? Well, that is a whole picture. Uh, like my delicate skin shows itself. Tunki, Tunki, how do you approach your wound? You see how we avoid everything? <laughs> well, I, I know a certain process, but So, your approach is that you have a block. Uh, they, they, just, they keep it there. Your approach is you can't, you can't approach it, because you have a, a wall. That's right. All right. And others? All seems to have uh, already formed certain conclusions about this problem. This so, wall. your approach is that you come to certain conclusions. And then no longer allow yeah. to so, go to see it. I must. Your approach is going to with conclusions. Another is with ideas. The other is to run away from it. Mm -hmm. So our approaches are preventing you to look at it. Mm -hmm. Right mm -hmm. now, now if you want to look at it, want, want to observe the fact that you are wounded. Then you have to be free of your conclusions. You can't run away from it. You can't approach it with an idea. C can you approach it freely? If you are reading a detective thriller, if you know the whole plot before, you throw the book away. But if you don't know it, and it's rather exciting, you go through the whole chap whole book. Here, in the same way, you are hurt. And you really want to watch it, see what happens. God, see, find out what happens. To find out, you must come to it with the same curiosity, with the same eagerness. If you read a good book, a novel, then you watch it and see what happens. You don't even do that. Because then you may totally eliminate altogether conflict. That's the, that means a very sane mind. So is it that we're, we are not afraid of, of the wound itself, but what happens if the wound disappears? Partly. Because the wound uh, has given me some sense of identification. You follow? I'm somebody with a wound. Without wound, I'm nobody. <laughs> Can't be 
said that uh, the wood is caused by, we would like to have uh, a pleasant image. About other yourself. People, yeah, about, from other people. And yourself. And, uh, yes. And Mostly that, about yourself. Right. And so that, that pleasant image you have about yourself gets a pin trick. Gets a, uh, somebody puts a pin into it. That's right. Uh, then you get hurt. Yes, but, but I think there is a basic, there is a basic uh, a craving and, and wanting to be accepted by us. I mean, what? There is a basic craving in, in us. Bas basic craziness? A craving. Which is rather good. Right. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We've got basic craziness. <laughs> we are basically crazy. Quite right, sir. <laughs> I think you better stop, don't you? Being crazy? No, sir, you can continue with it. They shall, you see, sir, it shows that we cannot remain <laughs> soft. And let it tell the whole story. Okay, we've been through all that. Yeah, but how, how, how am I going to drop this? I mean, they, this seems to be the I said, drop. you don't, but just watch it, that you are influ Just say, take one fact, so for God's sake, for no, Tunki, which is that you are influenced by your parents, by the school, by teachers, by prop... You are being influenced all around. Can you watch? Just listen to it, okay? Can you watch this influence being a pressure on you? Just watch it. I'm afraid we must stop. We'll do it tomorrow. Huh?